Hey guys, it's Ash, and this will be my Clash Royale guide on how to build a perfect deck. Building a good, well-balanced deck is key for success in this game. So in this guide, I'm going to break it down in simpler terms, giving you guys the ingredients of what's needed to make an excellent deck. Now, just take a look at my current deck that I'm using and my recent attack log. As you can see, all my recent attacks have been a success, and I'm doing this with low-level cards. I haven't purchased any gems to speed up my progress, and I'm constantly beating people that have higher level cards than me. And the reason I'm able to beat them is not just skill, but also because I have a very well-balanced deck. Also, note that there is no such thing as a best deck. There are so many ways of creating an excellent deck, uh, and that's what I'm going to teach you guys in this video, to create your own perfect deck. Now, whenever we're talking about deck building, it's always about synergy. You need every card to work alongside each other, and never because it's a good card. Epic cards are great, but if you're just using epic cards solely because they're epic, uh, then you won't have success. Building a good deck is about synergy, not rarity. Next, defense is just as important as offense. Sure, you need offense to destroy crown towers and win, but you're also gonna need defense to defend your own towers. So your deck needs a great balance of defense and offense to be successful. Next, you need a balance of point and splash damage cards. There are two types of damage inflicting cards in this game. Cards that deal point damage, which are cards that inflict damage to only one opposing unit. For example, a musketeer targeting a giant. Although point attackers are limited to targeting one unit, they are among the strongest damage inflicting units in the game. And point damaging cards are necessary for beating high hit point troops. And the other types of cards are cards that deal splash damage, which are cards that inflict damage to multiple units. Uh, for example, a witch targeting a whole skeleton army, she can take it all out very quickly. Uh, while splash damaging units have the advantage of dealing damage to multiple opposing units, they deal among the lowest damage per second in the game. So splash damaging cards are necessary for beating hordes of low hit point troops. You're also gonna need a balance of melee and range troops. Range troops tend to have low hit points but high damage per second. So it's important to combine them with melee troops in front of them to shield. Having too many melee troops make them susceptible to splash damage. So it's important to combine them with ranged troops so that your melee troops shield as your ranged troops destroys the splash damaging threat. Your average elixir cost is also very important. The best cards tend to have the greatest elixir cost. However, they take the longest to deploy because of their high elixir cost as you will need to wait longer to load up on elixir. So with these key elements in mind, I've devised a simple guideline or ingredients that are necessary for a well-balanced deck. First, it's a good idea to have an average elixir cost that's between 3.7 and 4.5. You will find that you're struggling to constantly deploy troops if your cost is higher than this. While if your average elixir cost is below 3.7, uh, then you'll find that although you are able to deploy many cards quickly, you're struggling against splash damaging threats as the lowest elixir cost cards tend to be the troops with the lowest hit points. Next, you're gonna need at least two point damage inflicting cards. Although hordes of low HP troops are able to quickly destroy high HP cards, they are quickly eradicated by splash damage. Thus, point damage inflicting cards are important for controlling high HP cards. Some examples of point damage inflicting cards include the Musketeer, Prince, Spear Goblins, Knight, Archers, P.E.K.K.A. or min Mini P.E.K.K.A. Minions or the Minion Horde, uh, Barbarians, and Cannon, Tesla, Expo, or Infernal Tower. Next, you're gonna need at least three splash damage inflicting cards. Splash damage inflicting cards are very important for controlling large hordes of troops. Some examples of splash damage inflicting cards include Arrows, Fireball, Witch, Baby Dragon, Valkyrie, Bomber, Wizard, uh, the Giant Skeleton, its Aftermath Bomb Damage, uh, the Bomb Tower, Mortar, Rocket, Lightning, or Zap. Next, 
you're gonna need at least two high HP cards, either a troop or defense with at least 1000 hit points. Having cards with high HP are necessary to soak damage from splash damaging threats. So some examples of high HP cards include the Giant, Prince, Goblin Hut, Bomb Tower, Barbarian Hut, uh, Pekka, Giant Skeleton, Golem, or Cannon Expo, or Infernal Tower. Next, you're gonna need at least two air targeting troops or defense. You will need multiple ways of dealing with aerial attackers uh, that use troops such as Baby Dragon or Balloon. Examples of air targeting cards include Archers, Musketeer, Spear Goblins, Minions of the Minion Horde, Witch, Baby Dragon, Wizard, Tesla, Expo, or the Infernal Tower. Next, you're gonna need at least one splash damage inflicting spell card. Although troops that deal splash damage can control large hordes of troops, uh, their range and coverage is limited. Thus, it's important to have a splash damaging card, such as arrows, so that you are able to inflict a large radius of splash in any given area. For example, your bomber that does splash is behind your goblin, but your opponent deploys a goblin barrel onto one of your weakened towers. Obviously, your bomber won't be able to get it if it's not within its vicinity. So, so it's important to have that ability with a card like arrows to quickly destroy that goblins to protect your tower. So these damage inflicting spell cards are also excellent for taking down weakened crown towers. And examples of splash damage inflicting spell cards include arrows, fireball, rocket, lightning, or the zap spell. Finally, you're gonna need at least one defensive structure. Huts such as a tombstone or goblin hut, or defenses such as an infernal tower or hidden tesla are excellent for slowing down the pace of the game so that you can continue to load up on elixir and defend. As long as you have your crown towers protected, you only need to destroy one more crown tower than your opponent to win. So having at least one defensive structure to protect your towers is very important. Some examples of defensive structures include the Goblin Hut, Bomb Tower, Barbarian Hut, uh, Cannon, Tesla, Expo, Inferno Tower, or Mortar. So looking at my deck, as you can see, my average elixir cost is 4.3, which is pretty good. I have two high point damage inflicting troops in Prince and Musketeer uh, that have decent HP so I can destroy other high HP units without having to worry about splash damage, spell cards taking them out. I also have a baby dragon, arrows, and a fireball that can deal splash damage so I have multiple ways to control swarms or hordes of troops. I have a giant, prince, and an infernal tower that all have very decent HP so that I can couple them with my musketeer or baby dragon to deal point damage and or splash damage behind them. I have an inferno tower, musketeer, and a baby dragon to deal both point and splash damage to air targets. I have arrows and a fireball so I can freely inflict splash damage anywhere on the field to eradicate hordes or finish off a weakened tower. I have an infernal tower to defend my crown towers from opposing high HP troops with heavy point damage. I also have a skeleton army to either eat away or slow down or distract troops. It can be used for both offense and defense. So hope you guys learned a lot from this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't. I'm gonna be uploading a lot more Clash Royale guides like this. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Later.